can't sing in town, you can't get money. You've got to work somewhere and get money. So we young people waiting. After this trucking, we'll be getting more, more camel, more trucking. And young people up here. He's got everything set up. He's, he's doing well. He's paying his workers. He's got funds coming in to pay. And what we've done, we've got the registration through, the PDL accounts, business account open. And he's well on his way. He's, he's really good. We've got a in that. Not a couple it's really good to see those boys doing the mustering and that. It, yeah, it makes them look big. Come on, you know, Tiffany. Better like Chip. Put in the yard, man. Come on, really fun. I'll kill you. I like this is my wife. I'm not fired for camo. Oh yeah? <laughs> When it comes to mustering out in the bush, you will not find anyone as good as, say, Roger and Sandy. You just won't. Quiet, quiet. We're going to go that way. We do we're going this way. Go this way, Brown. I'll see you come up quiet after all. Quiet, Brown. You're going to be in the jungle. You're going to be in the jungle. You're going to come up. Then you're going to come up too. He's easy, easy to come with my door. It's very serious. Serious, he came away. Mm. My friend? <laughs> Down here. Hello, Roger. Down here. How are you, buddy? Hello. Everything's better. <laughs> Everything's better. How are my camel here, mate? Roger hasn't exactly gone to business school, and uh, it's pretty complicated world marketing for a camel, so. I act as a contact between Roger and the, the different markets, like the abattoirs. Okay, that's another abattoir, Roger. Oh, well, you've got to tell me that one. Can you remember oh, three years ago when you caught camels? Mm. You used to sell them to uh, an abattoir in South Australia, to Peterborough, and that one closed down. And now we sell them to Queensland. Well, the the old laboratory in uh, South Australia, Peterborough, that's opening again. The business side and business sense is, is, uh, is one of our roles. There's myself and Brian, Brian Dodson in there, the economic advisor. So yeah, we, we try and mentor his business as well. Okay, Roger, how many hours? Or do, have, you just work, have you worked yeah, out the amount? Yeah, just working off all day, not really hard. So have you worked out how much money everyone's to be paid? How much do you want to rub out milk? Being my, how much money have we got left in the account? How much do you think? How much do you think? Was it six or seven thousand? Or seven. <laughs> six. <laughs> money, money side, this add a little bit over. This money come or go that way. Truck take him, kill him. We don't know. We don't know that the law, we don't know anything. 
when he sells his camels from the uh, abattoir, they send us a, 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 a kill sheet and the individual weight of every camel is recorded and how much per kilo, because there's a sliding scale per kilo. So it's not just a bigger camel makes you more money because he's heavier. A bigger camel also makes you more money because the price per kilo is more. It, it fits the market better. So all that is transparent and recorded. Uh, Roger has he can come into our offices any time and we can put that on the computer for him. John, tell me everything, in, anything, you know. See some money, Roger, you've got a big camel. <laughs> the situation with Roger Kai Pippi is, has been really quite good. I think he's probably, or John Campos, the camel manager, and him have mustered something like 450 odd camels, which is about nine loads, which is excellent. Um, the business side of things with Roger is going okay. So uh, the trouble is that you can't double deck camels. So you can't just use a, a cattle road train. You've got to change your trailers. So there's only a few trucks that are available for camel carting. And we've got a bottleneck at the moment. The trouble is we've now run out of hay at the yards and we've got hay in a storage area here, but we have to pay a truck to cart them out to the bush to the West Boy Yards. So it's getting very expensive. And it comes off Roger's check. See? That's why we're going to have a meeting. Us, Fran and, and John. And they'll sell everything for everybody. You know? And clear everybody. Happy to work in. Because I'm worried I got, I got, a, I got, a, I got a good trunk mushroom man too. But yeah, nindy people. <sighs> Yeah, I'm happy. Come and sitting here waiting for the truck. The truck will come up and pick him up. It's very slow out here. We don't fight the time. And one of the biggest hurdles for people who are starting up enterprises is at times time. Waiting on time for things to happen but we do get there. I think up to date, for controlling the camel population in Australia, the norm has just been to cull, to put people in helicopters with rifles and shoot them and lay them to waste. Probably over the last 18 months in particular, I'm doing a lot of work in this um, Northern Territory, South Australia area. More of it making people aware that there are other opportunities. Uh, you know, a lot of opportunities for Indigenous people because the majority of the camels are on Indigenous land. Here's your camels, Roger. 